This is part six in our series of lectures on the principle of mathematical induction. We're going to do a fourth example of a result proved by the principle of mathematical induction. Here's the result that we're going to prove. We're going to show that for every natural number n, if we take this quantity, n cubed over 3 plus n to the 5 over 5 plus 7 over 7n over 15, that that actually comes out to be an integer. And we're going to do that proof using the principle of mathematical induction. Well, there isn't really much to say about it except to just simply launch into the proof. So why don't you see if you can write the beginning of the proof at least, the part of the proof where you set things up, where you tell us what are the open sentences that you're intending to prove and the method that you're going to use to do that. Okay, so this is what I was referring to. At the beginning of the proof, you say, for each natural number n, we let p of n denote the open sentence that n cubed over 3 plus n to the 5 over 5 plus 7n over 15 is an integer, and that we're going to use the principle of mathematical induction to prove that for every natural number n, p of n is true. The next step in the proof is the basis step. So see if you can write down a proof of the basis step. So here's my proof. For n equal to 1, if you simply write down what this is for n equal to 1, it's 1 third plus 1 fifth plus 7 fifteenths. If you get a common denominator of 15 and add them together, you see that it really does come out to be 1, which is an integer. Thus p of 1 is true. The next step in the proof is the inductive step. So see if you can figure out how to write up what is the inductive part of the proof. So here's the inductive step. We give ourselves a generic natural number n, and we assume that p of n is true, which means that this quantity here is an integer. And we've got to use that assumption to prove that p of n plus 1 is true. And so what I do is I take this quantity and I replace n by n plus 1, and that gives me this. Okay, so the proof is really a brute force kind of a thing. What I've done is I've actually expanded n plus 1 cubed, and I've written it down like this. I've expanded n plus 1 to the 5, which actually is this. And um, then I've just copied this one down again. So this quantity is actually equal to this entire sum here. Um, now, if you're not aware of how to do these things, how was I able to do these two here? Um, I've made use of something called Pascal's triangle. And that's something that you should be familiar with. So let me just digress for a moment to show you this Pascal's triangle in order to explain where these two things come from. So this triangular array of numbers is known as Pascal's Triangle. And the way you do it is, you start with a 1 at the top, and then you move downwards. And wherever you are, you look up to the right and to the left, and you add the two numbers that you see. So 1 plus nothing is 1. And similarly here, 1 plus nothing is 1. Now, similarly here, we have 1 plus nothing is 1. Now when you're here... You look up to the right and to the left, and you add those two numbers, you get 2. Similarly here, you get 1. From here, you get 1. From here, you get 1 plus 2, which is 3. From here, you get 2 plus 1 is 3, etc. This is 1 plus 3. This is 3 plus 3. This is 3 plus 1, etc. Then it turns out that these numbers here are the coefficients in a certain expansion. So let's write down, um, say, this one here. So these numbers give you the coefficients in the expansion of the expression 1 plus x cubed. It's 1 plus 3 times x 
plus 3x squared plus 1, or plus x cubed, rather. And if you look at these here, those are the coefficients in the expansion of 1 plus x to the 5. It's 1 plus 5x plus 10x squared plus 10x cubed plus 5x to the 4 plus 1 times x to the 5. Okay, I've just simply used the numbers that appear here. Those are the coefficients in this expansion. Okay, so that's an, um, one way to write down how one gets the expansions of these three thing or of these two things, and that's what I used on the previous slide. So let's return to our proof. That's how I got this and this. And now the idea is to try to get the inductive hypothesis in the picture that this is an integer. So what I do is I look at the first term in each of these three things, and I group those together. That gives me this first parenthesis. The last parenthesis comes from just looking at the very last term, this one, um, this one, and this one. So that gives me this one. And now you notice all of the other terms are divisible by uh, the number that appears in the denominator. So it's this n squared, this n, this is an n to the 4, a 2n cubed, a 2n squared, and n. So those are the terms that I've grouped here. Now by grouping things in that way, you see this term is an integer. That is the inductive hypothesis. This term is clearly an integer. And this term is an integer because it adds up to 1, as we calculated on the previous page. So it follows that this entire expression is an integer because it's the sum of three integers. And so I've managed to show that this is an integer, which is to say that p of n plus 1 is true. And you'll notice that I indicated here when I was making use of the inductive hypothesis that p of n is true. It's the fact that this is an integer. Okay, so we now have the right to say that it follows from principle of mathematical induction that p of n is true for all natural numbers n.